I'll come back to Final Fantasy XIV. But we are currently busy with our gather roll quest. And... Shunya here has a quest, so not immediately the next gathering spot, but I think we had to deliver our latest items we just gathered to a sister who is our current customer. The cycle of life. I finished putting together Wapirta's delivery. Please be careful with it. She lives in the resplendent quarter. Here. I've marked it on your map. Master Shunye, I would go along with Desiree with your permission. Consider a diversion for my work. You've been urging me to take time to relax after all. You have a strange idea of relaxation, but I see no reason to object. Very well. You both can deliver this package to my sister. Apologies for the imposition, Desiree. Let us depart at once. Yes, she is. Let us complete our task. Ah, oh, here too. I saw you at my brother's trap, yes? I take it he asked you to deliver my order? Yes, everything's here. I must say, these materials are of higher quality than I've come to expect. My brother has had a good stock of fortune with you two, it seems. I apologize for my conduct before. It was unbecoming of me and I hope to make amends. But above all, please help my brother succeed in his endeavors. You appeared rather unsupportive earlier. I was under the impression you wished you would quit his shop and leave the city. Why? Surely life here is not so terrible a prospect? I thought there was something different about you. You don't have them to all, do you? Neither do I. And neither do you, for that matter. My people value living in harmony with nature above all, and settle only where that harmony won't be disrupted. In small villages, usually. They are built and maintained by our women. The men travel from village to village, fostering our bonds with one another. Our families are built upon the relationship between parent and child. When a child is born, their mother and father become inextricably bound to each other as well. Mothers live with their children until they become independent, while fathers continue to travel. As the seasons turn, the men visit their families in each village they pass through. Although their time together is fleeting, it's always precious. We talk until the small hours of the morning, sharing all that has happened since last we met. The fathers tell us how the other villages fare, and it makes our small settlements feel so much larger. Although there is no place we can point to as the home of a Shetona, we are connected in this way, like the roots of a great tree. Fascinating. Viviera leads such different lives, yet even so, there are shades of similarity. I take it Shunya did not always live in Toliola then. He used to travel the land as well. The bond with his first family was formed in a small village to the north, among the tall mountains. Yet, not long after his departure one season, the village was suddenly destroyed. None survived. No one knows exactly what happened, but those who saw the aftermath said that nothing but scarred and scorched earth remained. A terrible sight. Since that day, Shunya ceased to travel. For 50 years he lived in the city all alone. Fifty years? That means... How many winters has Shunya seen exactly? 
He is born shortly after the formation of Tuliola, so that would make him 80 or so, I suppose? Eighty? All oh, this time I've been a fool. His nature is so unmeaning that I fought him to be the same age as I. How could he forgive my utter rudeness, trying to pass without paying him the proper respects? Must apologize to save my honor and my life. How old are you, Uvlo? I've seen but thirty-two summers, a babe compared to Shunye. You know that it's a man's duty to pay the utmost respect to our elders. Those who forget this do not live to become an elder themselves. I must make amends to Shunye. Your sister, please, tell me what I can give him. I don't think Shunye cares, but you've seemed quite insistent, so... Perhaps something he could sell in his apothecary? A Pelo Pelo friend of mine told me that in the highlands of Okopasha one can find many rare plants and minerals. Flowers that bloom but once in many moons, emeralds with enchanting patterns and more besides. A brilliant idea. I shall depart to Okopasha at once and collect the finest items I can find. At this rate, I must request your aid. Although the burden of shame is sorely mine to bear, I feel that I alone cannot gather enough items to make up for the magnitude of my disrespect. Will you agree, please? You would be my savior. <laughs> Fine. Thank you, Desiree. I shall leave at once. Uh, let us meet again at the apothecary to deliver my offerings. I have enthusiasm of youth. Uvro may be treating this more seriously than he needs to, but perhaps that energy may rub off on Shunye. Precious mineral. Okay, done. And Uflo on his knees. Please deliver the rest of my offerings to Master Shunye. I would do it myself, but I must stay in this position as a form of repentance. It's a custom I learned in the Far East, and I have yet to find a better way to express the shame in one's heart. Uh, welcome back, Desiree. Uflo told me about everything, most empathetically, I might add. There's much I would say on the matter, but as I'm taken to understand that you've brought me a gift, I would happily receive it from you first. Here you go. My word, Uflo's gift alone left me speechless. This is surely more than I deserve. Materials of this quality can only be gathered by truly skilled hands. I'm grateful, you can be sure. All is forgiven, Uflo. In fact, there's nothing for me to forgive. As Ua Piotr told you, my people live with their mothers until they come of age. From her, they learn all the skills and knowledge they need to flourish without any strict hierarchy among the men. While I appreciate your gesture, I would be much obliged if we could continue on as we have been. I... Uh, well... Uh, as you wish, Master Shunye. I'm glad we've reached an understanding. Now, let's get back to work, shall we? Before that, regardless of whether or not I owe you respect, I still pride into your past only to save my own curiosity. And for that, I am deeply sorry. There's no need. It wasn't as if I meant to keep it a secret. So let me clear the air. What Piotr told you was true. My travels ended 50 years ago after I lost my family. To us, death isn't something to be mourned. It's merely another part of a cycle of life. I should have carried on and found a new family in a new village. But I couldn't. Not when the cause of my family's death remained a mystery. 
Do you truly know nothing? The complete destruction of a settlement, even a small one, surely would not have gone unnoticed. I think you underestimate how small. You could count the number of houses on one hand. To reach the nearest proper village, we had to traverse two towering mountains. Few could have witnessed the incident. The scale of destruction was too great for bandits. Many have suggested that the Tural the Dral was to blame. I was lodging in the aforementioned village when the tidings reached me. A few days prior, a streak of light had scarred the sky so bright that it was clearly visible even in daytime. It disappeared behind the mountain peaks, and soon after the earth trembled, the trees and mountains shook and wind brought dust through the valleys. That sounds like a meteor. That was the conclusion I reached as well. A meteor from the heavens struck my family's home by pure chance. Anyway, it's only a theory. You would think the evidence of such strategy would be more definitive, but it hasn't been that easy. Wait a moment, please. What is this? Stones like this were found scattered about in the ruins, as if the heavens themselves wept to see the devastation. I've taken to calling them Azure Tears. Having been in this business for so long, I can hazard a guess as to their true nature, and I believe that proof of what befell my family must lie within these fragments. Even so, the size of evidence continues to elude me. Then again, perhaps my desire for answers caused me to see connection where there are none. But even if I wanted to, I can't let it go. I shall do my utmost under Master Shunyev's employ. For now, that is all I can do. Digging up the truth. Welcome back to my apothecary, Desiree. I always appreciate you stopping by. You're busy as ever, as you can see. Although, since last we met, Uvalo has been acting strangely. He brushed off all my attempts to help and work with a singular focus. I think he still believes he crossed the line in asking about my past and has focused on his efforts more than usual to make up for his perceived affront. Which to say, I have no work for you today. Well, if our tasks of the day are done, I think we should try to unravel the nature of these Azure Tears you found. Ah, ah, I understand now. You squared away today's work so quickly because you had hoped to employ Desiree's energies to honor Tears. Not exactly, yet I admit the thought did occur to me. I have found it difficult to think of aught else as of late. What could those stones possibly be? To be told, I can scarce imagine how we might prove they are connected to a meteor. As difficult as it is for me to admit, Master Shunya, your theory remains just that. Yet if we were to find similar crystals at another location where meteors had fallen, what then? Would that not provide sufficient evidence of the two phenomena are related? I don't think you'll find anything. I've asked all would listen if they have seen something assembling with tears. 
but even the most worldly of my connections say they are quite singular. Perhaps they are the only objects of their kind in this world. In that case, they would be rarer than any precious jewel. I believe your inability to find any information on gives us all the more reason to look. Desiree and I have yet to search for them after all, and you know our skill at finding the rarest of specimens. I want to know the truth. You too? Very well, but I only make this imposition on you once. You've done enough for me already. Now, there are several locations to where meteorites have fallen in the past. The Sexodos Crater is purported to be the largest by scholars who study such phenomena. However, over the years, nature has healed the scar left behind. Soil has accumulated and the trees have taken root. Now the area is known as Yaktel. But I doubt a little earth and wood can deter you. Somewhere on the old wildlife, you may find material that has lain there since the meteor struck. I mean, the meteors literally hanging in the trees there. If you find something that resembles the tears, then we may be able to solidify a theory of what transpired 50 years ago. We'll know they came from a meteorite at least. Well then, let us waste no time. Off to Yaktel we go. I would have expected to find them in Lower Yaktel here. Of course, as I said, there are meteors in the trees there. I'm sorry you got roped into this, but I'm looking forward to seeing what you can find all the same. What we seek is most likely in Yaktel. We have to dig deep, but I know you're equal to the task. Amazing! This is plainly composed of materials entirely different to those found on the surface of Yaktel. Much more dense, much, much older, and shaped so beautifully besides. You've done well, Desiree. With both you and Uvlo's samples, we may be able to reach a conclusion at last.
Did you discover odd? Well, I was able to detect small fragments of a deep blue substance. When I shined a light on it, its color did indeed resemble the tears. But even so, there wasn't enough. As far as my abilities can discern, there's no way to say for certain that the two substances are one and the same. Let's see. Yet you admit the possibility they might be related. These are good tidings. We simply need to keep digging and eventually find a sample large enough to give us a definitive conclusion. I did not expect this journey to be finished after just one outing. I shall return to Yaktel as many times as it takes. Why must you do this to yourself, Uvlo? You needn't feel obligated to help me resolve this personal matter. At the end of the day, it won't teach you any more about the Shatona. You're correct. I admit that digging deep into the soil is not a task that will help my people thrive. Yet hearing Uha Pietas speak with such affection about her family and seeing you suffer so deeply from the loss of your own, I came to a realization. Though we may call ourselves by different names, both our peoples cherish family above all. If my village suffered the same fate as yours, I would not rest until I found the cause. I could not suffer to live with myself otherwise. And I know you feel the same. That's why you still have a tears, even though they hold naught but painful memories. Before, you said that your long years running the shop allowed you to guess that the stones were related to your tragedy. But I know that deep down you started this apothecary because you knew it would bring you closer to an answer. As your employee, it only means that I should help you achieve this goal. Allow me to help you, Master Shunye. So reckless you are in your own journey, but so diligent in helping me along in mine. I hope you've at least managed to save a handful of coins since coming here. <laughs> if you're going forward with this, I must ask that you spare Yaktel future digging. I wouldn't sacrifice the region's natural beauty on my quest, nor damage another's home. There has to be a different way, but I shall require time to find it. When I do, I only ask that you be there to help this way. Can I count on you? You can. Thank you truly. I'll have to sell a good portion of my stock to pay back the debt I owe you after all is said and done. <laughs> Hang in there. Shunya is thrilled with your efforts. He now considers you a glorious gatherer. Of course, Master Shunya pays me for my work. Although I have little use for money, I tried to give him some of my wages since he is hosting my stay, but he refused. So, in exchange for his hospitality, I clean and take care of other household matters, which just allows him to open shop at the same time each morning. Which has garnered much praise from his regular customers. Now, what for level 100? I can. You're here just in time, Desiree. I would seek counsel for my best gatherers. Uvlo, a moment, if you will. Before we begin, I would once again like to offer my thanks. What you brought back from Yatel was more than I could have imagined. Even so, our efforts were lacking. We still have yet to identify the origin of the tears. Have you thought of where we might go next? 
in a manner of speaking, I suppose. But I must warn you, I can't say for certain we'll find anything. Most of my knowledge of the tears come from stories I've heard from fellow merchants. In fact, it was a merchant from Igbrash who suggested Yaktel as a place of inquiry, given its history with meteorites. We often exchanged information as well as goods. And all that lead ultimately bore no fruit. Looking back, I believe my mistake was relying solely on incomplete information. You need a perspective from a MOOC to complete the whole picture. I see we are on the same track, Desiree. The merchant in question was of a growl, and as such may not have been privy to information from Mamuk. Although the two tribes are now at peace, the history is one of conflict. Even if the merchant hadn't been one of their ancestral enemies, the Mamuja who populate Mamuk are known to be wary of outsiders. I understand times have changed in that respect, but I wonder how realistic it would be to try and seek information in Mamuk. I know some people I can talk to. You've been there before? Of course. We've been working together for so long and I almost forgot about your storied history. Obviously the right of secession brought you to every corner of Tural. Then I give you this task, Desiree. Go to Mamuk and speak with her people there. Perhaps someone has seen something that resembles the tears. You should accompany her. I can manage to store well enough in your absence. That is kind of you truly, but if you've even half as good at gathering information as you are at gathering materials, then your talent would be wasted here. Please, go with Desiree. I shall remain here and await your gift of good tidings. You can be sure of that. But let us depart from Mamuk. We're here. I suppose now we split up and speak with whomever we see. No, no, no. You disagree? Ah, yes. Master Shuni did mention that Mamulja here are wary of outsiders. When you take the lead, Desiree, I shall follow and learn. Uvlo is now accompanying you. I was taken to understand that Mamuk was a rather isolated settlement, yet an airthrite stands at its entrance. Makes me wonder whether one could be built in my village. Ah, tis a fort best forgotten. I hear the cost of maintaining an airfare is quite exorbitant. Every day I spend in the outside world, I realize more and more how it revolves around money. Are these the proper crystals? Oh, I recognize you. You have Pakul Jaja, aren't you? What business do you have with one such as me? Crystallized stone shaped like a teardrop. Can't say I've seen such a thing, but if I had, I'm sure I would have remembered it. Do you think I remember every single rock I lay eyes on? That's the one thing we don't have any shortage of around here. Maybe if rocks could fill a hungry belly, I'd pay more attention to them, but they can't, and so I don't. Now leave me be. I cannot say I've ever seen statues quite like these before. I take it these designs are meant to evoke a Mamuja's head? Of course, I understand the desire to immortalize one's forebears with stone objects. My people do much the same, yet to build structures of stone in the middle of such lush forests? No matter how many times I see it, I always find it peculiar.
Why isn't this an interesting line of inquiry? Yaktel was once witch with ores of all hues, but I've never heard of one shaped like a teardrop. Well, it would take a skilled artisan to make a shape like that. Perhaps if some force were applied to the ore right at the moment of crystallization? Or perhaps if tears themselves were crystallized. But those are only idle thoughts. Either way, I've never seen such a thing with my own eyes. Can't you see I'm resting? Why are you asking me about crystals? Just take a few steps into the wilderness and you practically trip over them. Eh? What do you mean? That's not what you're looking for. And why do you think I care? So what have you learned? Not much of use from the instant. Desiree, if you will, I would suggest we approach our questioning from a different angle. If you can say one thing for certain is that the stone is rare indeed. So instead of seeking it outright, perhaps we should first seek someone who collects such objects. Good idea. Good, then we are decided. Let's not lose heart yet. A gatherer in Mamuk? A friend of mine had a particular knack for it. Every time he came back from a scouting mission, he would have some rare specimen in his hands. It was a nice way to earn some extra coin. He's no longer with us, unfortunately, but his grandson works in Golmajik Grove, and I hear is a deft hand himself. The boy's name was... Uh, doesn't remember. Ah, a collector of rare stones and plants, you say? I'm sure I've heard of at least one. Ah yes, I do recall the young Gosalja mentioning his grandfather had quite a collection. He used to bring back all sorts of bits and bobs back from his reconnoitres. I admit it's been quite a while since I've spoken to Gosalja, so I cannot say whether he's held on to his grandfather's belongings. That story sounded very familiar. I believe his Gosalja's grandfather may be the very collector we seek. Or may have been, rather. Still, the obvious course of action is to speak with Grosalja and see if he still possesses any of his grandfather's belongings. Let's depart to Golmajik Grof. Everywhere we are surrounded by trees of unimaginable height. I feel so small in comparison. The clan of the era known as the Rava who dwell within the Golmore jungle would likely be unmoved by such a sight. Instead, their eyes would seek out places where their natural complexion would allow them to blend to the surrounding foliage. By contrast, the era of my tribe are more suited to camouflaging themselves among the snow-capped mountaintops. Still, the fauna of this place does have a unique coloring. Perhaps I could disguise myself if I so desired? Hmm. Would you turn around for a moment, Desiree? Well? Mm. Soldier. Oh, hello. Did you need something from me? You're a good soldier, yes? A grandson of a renowned collector, as we thought? I am, and my grandfather was indeed fond of showing off his collection. But how in the world did you know that? Well, that explains everything. Still, this is quite an unexpected visit. And we thank you for indulging us. So, did your grandfather's collection contain anything that might resemble the stones we told you about? Yes. 
Yes, your description made me recall one of my favorites, in fact. I'm sad to say I lost it when I was a child, though, but my memories of it is crystal clear. I see. Unfortunately, a memory is not enough for us to judge whether the two are related. I may know where he found it. As you heard, my grandfather served as a scout in the Mamuljan Jabral there at war. He was known as a swimmer without equal and used to as a note to travel to every corner of a forest unnoticed. The notes was of a spring to start the forest, correct? Are you saying they're connected somehow? Yes, a network of tunnels runs under the earth. One can tell the whiff and breath of a forest, if you know where to go, that is. I remember my grandfather said he found a crystal on a mission to Igbrash. It was lying there on a note floor as if waiting for him. It's likely that he found an Igrash Tzoli, where the waters once went wet as blood. But Jabral would bury their fallen warriors where none expected the scout to be bold enough to trespass. The story has promise. The samples we found before were pulled from deep layers of the earth, formed at a time immediately following the meteorite's impact. There is no telling how far down these tunnels reach, but doubtless they pass through the same layers. Naturally, materials from these layers would corrode and settle at the bottom of his nodes. Yes, this has promise indeed. Gosalja, you have given us direction. Thank you, truly. <laughs> no, thank you for allowing me to remember my grandfather so fondly. May you find that should you seek. Let us make our way to Igrash Soli, Desiree. This has been an interesting day thanks to you. I'll tell my grandfather the story next time I go to pay my respects. So this is Igrash Soli. I find it hard to believe that these waters were once stained red with the blood of war. Luckily this note is now clear and our vision should be unclouded as we search. Or should I say, your vision? This is difficult to confess. You can't swim? Or... As you know, I have trained among the snowy mountaintops, so you can imagine how poorly I might fare in a body of water. Although it shames me to place this burden on your shoulders, I would rather my soul not join those who just set adrift in this note. And this is of course assuming you possess the skill that I lack. I do. Can even breathe underwater. Good, good. Thank you, Desiree. I have ever been able to depend on you when I find myself wanting. You shall be the example I strive to emulate in my future travels. I shall sit here and await your safe return. Good luck. You, you made it. You are down there for so long I began to fear the worst. You must be half fished for how indefectible your lungs are. So, did you find out? To the 
best of my recollection, this looks almost exactly like the Stone Master Shunya had. Its shape, that unmistakable blue. We did it, Tessere. It appears our intuition was correct after all. This crystal is a remnant of a grievous wound dealt to the earth. It was the case in ancient times, and it was the case 50 years ago. We must return to Master Shunya with haste. Let fortune smile upon us at the last. I've never seen you two so excited to bring me a delivery. I take it something good is in store? Where did you... Did you really find this in your tell? But how? You dive to the bottom of a thin note? But the waters are so cold and the caves so labyrinthine, not to mention a single misplaced stroke would cloud your vision with sediment. Even so, here you are before me, and I'm more grateful for that than anything else. Shunya's apothecary could ask for none more skilled, none more brave than the two of you. I start examining this right away. Soon we'll have our answers. You found the impossible. I can say without a shadow of a doubt this fragment is made of the very same material as the azure tears I found in my ruined home. I have we proven your theory as to the true nature of our stones and how your village met its fate? I'm not certain that these stones formed much in the same way as obsidian dust near volcanoes. The minerals are melted by extreme heat, they cool into glassy lumps. In this case, when a meteor struck, the heat must have not only melted the earth, but sent it flying into the heavens. In the air it cooled into the shape of wilted petals, in the shape of tears. But they hold something else as well. The meteorite brought instantaneous destruction to the area of its impact. Of the plants, animal and people gone, the life force scattered into the air. I see. It is Aether which sleeps in those stones. When that energy fails to return to the life stream, it crystallizes. Just so. I believe these are more than mere lumps of glass. The blue light is the shining essence of all that was taken from me. For 50 years I searched, and for 50 years I knew one thing. The answer would never bring them back. I knew that even if I proved the cause of my tragedy, that revelation would bring no comfort. Even so... The land of Toral wept that day, for all that was lost in an instant. Now that I know that, I can move beyond my sorrow. I can remember my family as they were. The smiles, those bright days we shared, our happiness. Thank you, you two. I feel as if a great weight has been lifted from my shoulders. 
Within nature's grand cycle, the life I lived back then shall remain a shining beacon. I knew you had not strayed far from your roots. We simply had to help you dig them up again. <laughs> It may soon be time to depart upon another journey. The first in a long while. Not to find a new family per se, but to attune myself to nature's rhythm once again. You've brought me pieces of a much greater whole that I would rejoin. I shall let the wind's breath carry me where it will. And so long as a boundless horizon is before me, I shall walk. A worthy goal. It is. I would like to think that I comported myself well at this apothecary. In so doing, I succeeded in fulfilling both my responsibility to my people and also my obligation to Master Shunya as a friend. Although you may be tired of my praise, I'd like to express my thanks for you both once more. You would have been exceptional help if you did nothing more than gather what I asked, but you went far beyond that. Likewise, I learned more of a Shaton than I could have hoped. Yet my own quest is far from over. I will take this opportunity to go out into Tural and experience all it has to offer, the culture of a Shatona included. So if indeed you plan on leaving the city, I ask that you allow me to join you. Besides, a journey is only as good as your companions, or so they say. Why limit your journey to just Tural? You pose an interesting question. I can't say I had a particular destination in mind, so a trip across the salt would be as good as any. Perhaps I might find someone to guide me across the world's breath in exchange for a ramble around Tural? Does anyone suitable spring to mind? <laughs> Either way, these are decisions to be made in the future. For now, I don't intend to close up shop. Truly? Regardless of my reasons for starting with Apothecary, I've become quite fond of it, to say nothing of my local customers. Abandoning them without notice would be unseemly. And besides... How long do you believe you can travel with such light coin purse, Ovlo? Sleeping under the stars and foraging for your own food will only take you so far. Soon you'll be penniless and towards less hospitable climbs might very well take you. I, uh, well, I can... No. You can stay here and earn a bit more coin before our track. I would be a terrible owner if I let one of my best workers be so reckless. So for a while at least, let's continue on as we have been. There's so much more to be done after all. Right. Esteemed Contributor Shunya is ready to manage his apothecary with new insight to guide him. He now considers you a genius gatherer. I doubt those others in much to make you would welcome the aid of an able artisan. Speak of the other merchants and see how you can help. Holistic Gathering You'll be glad to hear business is brisk and in no small part thanks to your efforts. As for our journey, well, Uflo is still gathering the funds. I offered to cover our travel expenses, but he is loath to be in debt to an elder. It's been 50 years since I left the city, so I have no issues with staying here a little while longer. While Uflo readies his funds, 
I shall take my time preparing my shop and myself from the journey ahead. But no deliveries to be made today, it seems still. My shop must be clean and customers must be tended to. I admit I cannot count dealing with customers among my skills. I'd rather stick to the tasks which I can compete with my hands. But Master Junior was most insistent I get out there and smile, as he put it. He said friendly faces attract new customers. I think it shall be a while yet until I understand the subtleties of running a business in such a large city. Okay. Have a good journey, whenever it appears. Good, and I end this episode here, so until next time, amazing, don't get lost.